All right, so in this short video, we're gonna be talking about the funding rate. So you can locate the funding rate at all times within the contract details box, and that is on the lower left-hand corner of the screen. And you'll see that right now the funding rate is positive and it's slightly under two basis points. So we're gonna get into the funding rate, how it's derived, what its purpose is, but the most important thing that you need to take home from this, rather the most important thing that you need to understand is how the funding rate affects you at any given time because it can either be beneficial to you or detrimental to you depending on your positioning. So let's get into it. All right, so to understand the funding rate, first let's go over a little bit of how traditional futures contracts work. So traditional futures contracts expire at a future date. All right, this is different from perpetual swaps. Perpetual swaps, as the word implies, they do not expire, they are perpetual. Okay, so in traditional futures contracts, over time, the futures price is gonna converge with the spot price. Okay, it's gonna settle against the spot price. So essentially, the futures price is just the predetermined spot price at a future date. Now the market can be in one of two conditions. Okay, futures term structure, meaning over the course of those expirations, the shape of it can either be in contango or in backwardation. Okay, and this is just a diagram of how those two conditions converge over time. But when the market is in contango, that means that futures are trading at a premium to the spot price. What this means is futures are more expensive, they're trading above the spot price. When the market is in backwardation, what this means is that the futures are trading at a discount or they're trading below the spot price. Okay, now this difference is referred to as basis. Now with traditional futures, okay, this is gonna be for a host of different reasons. You could have something like supply shock, and there might be more near-term demand and the market might be in backwardation. With contango, which is a normal market condition, which is an indication of a normal healthy market, depending on what type of contango, obviously. But with contango, that is taking into consideration something like the cost of carry, okay? But perpetual swaps are a lot different. Okay? Perpetual swaps, they do not expire, okay? But similar to traditional futures contracts, they still need to settle against the spot price, okay? Now, there are times when the spot price, which is gonna make up the index that you'll see on the exchange, okay, the index is gonna be a bunch of different spot prices. There are times when the spot price is vastly different than the futures price on the exchange, okay? Now, these two are supposed to be in line. They need to sort of settle against each other over time, okay? But there are times when one side of the market is getting way more aggressive than the other, there's a lot of leverage used, there's a lot more gunpowder on a futures exchange because you're using, again, more capital or there's more notional capital at stake. So there will be a disparity between what is the spot price and the futures contract price or the perpetual swap price. So in order to keep the spot price and the contract price in line, there is an interest rate component added. And this is not the same interest rate component that is talked about in the actual formula for deriving the funding rate, which I've actually put down here below, which takes into account a different interest rate, the interest rates between uh, USD and Bitcoin. Okay, but there are times when the market is trading with a slight premium or a slight discount with relation to the spot price. And the funding rate is used to incentivize traders to take positions and actions that will close any short-term gaps and it penalizes the traders who do not. Okay, so this is used to keep the spot price and the contract price in line. Okay, and it acts as a interest rate component when one side of the market is experiencing this negatively. Okay, so if you are, if the funding rate is positive, longs are gonna be paying shorts. So this is essentially like that margin interest rate component that longs would be paying if they were using a traditional margin exchange, okay? If they were on an equities exchange, for example, and using margin, they'd be paying interest to keep that position open. So when the funding is positive, longs pay shorts, okay? What this means is that shorts are benefiting. So you're incentivized to be in a short position during that funding period because you're gonna pay that interest rate component. Now, when the funding rate is negative, shorts pay longs, it's the opposite, okay? What this means is that if you get in a long position, you're gonna receive that funding. And if you're in a short position, you're gonna be paying that funding. And remember, this can add up to be quite a large value, especially when you consider that this value is applied to the notional value of contracts you hold, right? So if you're using a lot of leverage and using a small amount of capital as the collateral for that, it's gonna eat into your position much more, 
all right so when the price is trading above the index price so when the price on the exchange is consistently trading well above the index price or what the spot price is that is when you're going to see that funding is typically positive because the dominant trade is aggressively long everyone wants to be long when the market is moving up right everyone is getting aggressively long and this is going to be a time when the funding is positive and likely long is going to be paying to stay in position okay so how is this an incentive well if you're long all you have to do is close out your position before the funding rate expires and then you don't have to pay it all right so what happens you close your position out that acts as movement to the downside the other side of that is since longs are paying the other side of the market it's a peer-to-peer -peer exchange shorts are incentivized to open up positions and when you open up a short position you're increasing downward pressure so the Funding being positive incentivizes longs to close out and shorts to open up. And over time, this keeps the price in line with the spot price, right? This, the combination of these dynamics push price down, all right? Now, when the price is consistently below the index price, let's say that the trade is aggressively to the downside, then shorts are, be, are gonna be paying because funding will be negative. Right, so over time, funding will be negative, dominant positioning to the downside. Shorts are incentivized to close their positions out when the funding is negative because they're going to be paying that interest rate component. By closing their positions out, they're ineffectively, they're effectively either getting out of their positions by buying back, getting flat, okay? And then you have the other side of that where longs are incentivized to open. That opens up positions and this adds to buying pressure, which ends up bringing the price back up in line with the index. Okay, so this is an interest rate component. One side of the market is gonna be paying, one side of the market is gonna be receiving, and it's an incentive mechanism to keep the spot price and the futures price constantly in line with each other, because remember, this does not expire, so it constantly needs to settle against, they constantly need to rather settle against one another uh, in order to keep these two markets in line.